One Steel is one of the steelmakers spun off from BHP Billiton 12 years ago when the big Australian decided to focus on mining. Well now One Steel has decided to focus on mining too and like its former parent has changed its name to reflect that decision to Arium. Although BHP just added a word Billiton, it didn't make up a new one. But unlike BHP, Arium the miner is run by steel men including Jeff Plummer, the CEO, a former BHP steel rod and bar manager. But he reckons he's learning the business and doing it pretty well. And two thirds of the company's employees are in steel making, even though all the money is made from mining. I spoke to Jeff Plummer in Sydney this week. Well, Jeff Plummer, the name, uh, the new name, Arium, where did that come from? Plus, more to the point, what did it cost? It hasn't cost much at all, actually. Uh, we think it'll cost about a million dollars, and the key elements for that are actually the cost of holding the EGM and uh, the protection we need to have in all the countries we op operate in, so registering the name. Uh, so it's going to be quite cheap. It's a made-up word, though, isn't it? It's a made-up word, but when it has to work in all those countries and it's got to be safe when you Google it, uh, you often fall back to made-up words. Future reference, uh, if you need a, another made-up word, I'll do it for you. For a bottle of wine even. It won't, won't cost much. Well, we had a bottle of wine going if somebody could get a better name, but nobody won it. Of course, the name change is fair because um, I saw an analyst report the other day that said that the steel business within One Steel uh, is not worth anything and the uh, mining business is 80% of the value and the mining consumables 20% of the value. Does that seem reasonable? I think the point out of that is that it reflects how much the company has changed and many in the marketplace didn't understand the extent to which the company had changed. Often when people change their name it's aspirational, um, but in the last four years we've moved from not really being in the iron ore business to being a six million tonne player. Um, middle of next year we'll be at a rate of 11 million tonnes of iron ore, so that makes us quite significant outside the big three. Uh, and we're the world's largest in grinding media, so a significant mining consumables business. So this time uh, next year, our asset base will be nearly 50% in uh, either iron ore or mining consumables. But, and, and what about the, the management time and focus? I mean, uh, and imagine that the problems in the steel business and manufacturing more generally are taking a lot of your time and the, a lot of the team's time. Is that, would that be true? Uh, it is. I mean, we've got some significant opportunities and some significant challenges. And uh, the way to deal with that, I think, is, is two things. We have uh, good people in place. I'm very proud of my team. I've got some good people. And it's clear what they're focused on. So the people who are in the steel space have got a clear set of objectives. And, you know, that's turning the business around, uh, making sure they generate cash and, and can contribute to the organisation that way. I suppose the question is, can they do that? I mean, is it, is it a realistic objective given the conditions in Australia, the currency where it is? Well again I, I think I'd make the observation I think uh, the market was surprised with how well we'd done on mining consumables. I think people were also surprised when we said that uh, we expected to be EBITDA positive uh, this half in our steel manufacturing business. Now if you went back 18 months ago or two years ago and said what are the chances of being EBITDA positive with the dollar well above parity and still very weak domestic demand? I think most people would have said not much. So to me, I think that shows that the focus is there, but also uh, the results are coming through. Now, of course, still on track to that? Yeah, uh, we're still confident that the steel manufacturing business will be EBITDA positive this half. Um, the next challenge is to make sure it's, it's back to generating cash, and then after that we look towards creating some value. But you know, six months ago people were concerned how big a black hole was it. Now I think the work we've done and delivering that will show that it, it's not the big black hole people fear. So do you think it can re uh, produce a return on its capital that's, I think that's adequate? That's certainly down the track. My, I'm focused, the first one is make sure it stops destroying value and then moves to generating cash which is, is value to the corporation and then we've got to make sure it can cover the cost of capital. So we've got a clear hierarchy of objectives. Uh, I like to tick them off one at a time. Sounds like you think that the steel division, the steel business, will still be part of One Steel or Arium in five years time? Well I think if you look over the last ten years, um, the steel business has had uh, times where its profitability has waxed and waned. I, I guess there's been some okay times and some poor times, but it's been a, a great cash generator. You know, the, the uh, investment in iron ore initially was paid for by the cash that came from the steel businesses, and that was all self-funded. And uh, you know, I think as a 
uh, cash provider, a cash generator. I'm certainly not looking to uh, grow into the steel space. It can be a, a good contributor to our, our portfolio and create value for our shareholders. You're on the Manufacturing Task Force, which is still meeting. Um, uh, uh, what are you concluding out of that, that the future of manufacturing in Australia is? I think there's, there's a couple of things. I think to uh, give the government some credit, it's clear that they've recognised it's a significant uh, issue and problem. Uh, the meetings so far, you've certainly had um, good representation from senior members of, of Cabinet. And, you know, they've clearly put some time into to thinking about it. So that's a start, the fact that it's clearly recognised as a, as a significant issue. Um, you know, I think we'll, we'll see that there's some disparity because it's manufacturing is a broad um, area of activity, but there's also some common themes, you know, and I think the common themes are what do we need to do in terms of productivity in the broader sense. So, uh, not just labour productivity, but asset productivity, the regulatory environment impact on, on productivity, but also what can we do in the shorter term for things like stimulating demand. Thanks for joining us, Jeff Plummer. Thank you for the time.